the, the fact that Bernie Sanders was so ready last night with Anderson Cooper to go, as you said, to go so specifically against Joe Biden tells you that he does see what happened in Iran as an opening. Right. And he does see it as a, as a potential to use against him in a very, very aggressive way. And, 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 and oh, it's not a sneak attack politically because we have seen the rise of Bernie Sanders, but this is more evidence that he sees it and they see something real especially in Iowa, where he has a history of doing very well. Like and, and, and indirectly, it's also a way to try to peel off. He's attacking Joe Biden, but he's trying to peel voters off Elizabeth Warren as well. At this moment, trying to get other progressives to say, Bernie is the true anti-war guy. Bernie has been there from the beginning. Let's go to Bernie at this key moment. Warren has had an interesting moment. She owned the summer. She's plateaued and even dipped since. The energy that we need. So here we are, 28 days away from Iowa. Bernie Sanders going after Joe Biden significantly on foreign policy, citing his vote in favor of the Iraq war as the race tightens up in the Hawkeye state. Uh, they're seizing on the heightened tensions with Iran as well. On a lot of these topics, how vulnerable do you think Joe Biden is on this? Not on foreign policy, which is the target at the moment, given what happened with uh, General Soleimani. You see that... There's a legitimate argument to be made that Joe Biden voted for the Gulf War, but voted, I'm sorry, voted against the Gulf War, but voted for the war in Iraq. And as you know, many people think that those were both mistakes. He should have supported the Gulf War. And they, Joe, uh, uh, Bernie Sanders in particular says that that vote for the war in Iraq was a mistake. Give me a sense, Juan, about how popular Bernie Sanders' position is. Well, that position is very in popular. In the Democratic primary. Extremely popular. The problem is Bernie Sanders has no record, no foreign policy record, no foreign policy credentials that can match up with a man who was head of the Foreign Relations Committee in the Senate and Vice President of the United States. I mean, that's, that's, that's a huge gap. The better argument for Bernie Sanders is you voted for NAFTA, Mr. Vice President, and how's that going to play with voters in the Midwest that we need in order to defeat Donald Trump? In that interview with Anderson Cooper, he said, how's it play in Michigan, Wisconsin, or Pennsylvania? Correct. That's, so you, yeah. you would suggest he's vulnerable on that? Well, no, because if you listen to the power of Bernie Sanders' statement, it's trying to get at the idea that so many moderate Democrats have decided, you know what? Bernie Sanders has a lot of energy and populist passions behind him. Look at the small, small donors who have given to him. But can he defeat Donald Trump? They say no. And here is Bernie Sanders saying, yes, I, in fact, can turn out voters who have more energy, more passion than Joe Biden, who voted uh, for NAFTA, and he's arguing NAFTA took away jobs. Uh but last night, Bernie Sanders, again, second day in a row, took aim at Joe Biden, specifically around the, around the war in Iraq. Take a look. Now that voters have foreign policy fresh on their minds, is it damaging to Joe Biden, what Bernie Sanders was, was saying, or is it a positive that he's got more experience than the others he's, he's fighting against? Well, sure, sir. Certainly the former vice president has, even before he was vice president, had a, a, extreme experience, you know, when it came to foreign policy. And I think this is where we're seeing a real divide among the Democratic electorate, which is Joe Biden's been in the lead for you know nearly a year now everybody said this is the time joe's going to go this is the time joe's going to go he hasn't gone and so what i think you see is that even in this time of upheaval in the middle east right americans still would rather have bad guys get killed by presidents than not and so i think what you're seeing is that joe biden has the ability to say look I can make an admission that Iraq was a mistake, maybe we shouldn't have done it, but I'm going to take a hard line when it comes to bad guys, and I think that's what Americans, even most Democrats, are looking for. Allie? I think foreign policy, though, being front and center, provides all of these candidates to either pass or fail the commander-in-chief test. Joe Biden, innately, by having been a former vice president, is someone who has that a little more baked into the cake. It's a place that he's comfortable competing with his fellow candidates. But if the Iraq war is going to come back being front and center, that does elevate the position of someone like Pete Buttigieg, for example, who can say, look, I served in these kinds of wars. This is how I would make those decisions. It also allows for these candidates who have only been senators, so domestically having more of a role to play to show how they would impact on the world stage. Because if you really look at President Trump, the thing that he's been able to do the most on is foreign policy and where America is on the world stage. He's really going after Joe Biden on foreign policy, which is Joe Biden's signature uh, calling card.
Yeah, exactly. This is the first time really in this campaign that we've seen foreign policy take the dominant uh, role on the campaign trail. And it's an important uh, topic, obviously. It's something that any president is going to have to deal with and, and has not really gotten the kind of discussion in most of the debates and most of the uh, uh, you know, campaign swings that we've seen. So in that sense, it's, uh, it's interesting to watch. You, you're right, the divide between Bernie Sanders and, and Joe Biden is a pretty significant one in this Democratic Party, that there is a dif you know, the difference between sort of the, um, the left, which actually shares what President Trump said he believed in, in terms of ending these endless wars, and the sort of more established kind of uh, somewhat more moderate uh, Democrats like Joe Biden that have, you know, been in office and used force uh, to some extent over these last uh, two decades, supported it even in, when it came to the ca case of the Iraq war. Now, of course, Joe Biden eventually came to, uh, you know, switched his position on that, came to oppose it, said it was really the way George W. Bush ran it that was so bad that he regretted giving George Bush the authorization to go to war in the first place, but it's been an issue over the years for him. Now here we are 12 years later after the 2008 race when it was such a dominant issue. Now it's come back uh, uh, on the campaign trail. And, and we saw, both saw in 2008, uh, you know, and again, actually, uh, in more recent campaigns, how the Iraq war resonated against Hillary Clinton from Barack Obama when he first ran against her in the primary. Absolutely. Yeah, and uh, I mean, and continued to. I mean, Bernie used it against her in 2016. Uh, the right. the fact that that she had voted as as Biden did to to authorize the war. I mean, Biden has to, however, own this more than anyone else, right? I mean, he was the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. He was someone who himself uh, had long experience in that part of the world. He knew all the players, uh, and he wanted to to. You know, back the back the president. Uh, he did clearly then uh, come to a different view later, uh, but not until after we'd had a long period where he was running back and forth uh, to Iraq. And at one point, he wanted remember to divide the country into three, in, in, three into parts, three parts ethnically. Uh, ethnically. Uh, and uh, so he has you know, a very long history of involvement in what has come to be uh, what both Sanders and Trump agree on, uh, you know, widely considered the, the biggest foreign policy blunder uh, of the last half century. And it's really interesting to hear Bernie Sanders say exactly the same thing about the Iraq war that President Trump does. Then you got Bernie Sanders, uh, who the Democrats should have got rid of a long time ago because he's a socialist <laughs> and he's hijacked their party. He came back with supporters. He got AOC and the squad with him now. And now that is the energy. And so you're, Biden's going to be the nominee without a doubt. If you look at the polls, they're not shifting. But it's going to do much damage because those energy people, they're not going to come out and support Biden. Watch, and, watch what I tell you. Well, that's what, yeah, that, in that's fact, that's, that is part of Bernie's argument, Katie. And one, the other part of it is if you look at something like NAFTA, he'll say, hey, wait a second. Joe Biden voted for NAFTA. How's that going to play in Michigan? How's that going to play in Wisconsin, Western Pennsylvania? Well, that's why you see people like Elizabeth Warren mm -hmm. saying she's going to vote for the USMCA, right? Um, but Bernie Sanders, they tried to get rid of him in 2016, mm -hmm. completely failed, and failed. he came back even stronger. And when you look at the grassroots effort, the fundraising numbers that are almost double what Joe Biden is bringing in, that translates into people on the ground are going to vote. Yep. And that's why you've seen President Obama with this rift in the party the populist, mm -hmm. non-establishment, grassroots versus the, establish versus the establishment, which is Joe Biden, uh, him coming out and saying, look, I'm not endorsing anybody, but I just want everyone to know when there's a nominee, we have to get behind them, because you're absolutely right. The Bernie Sanders faction of the party and the Elizabeth Warren faction are so far left that they are worried that they will not come out and vote for someone like Joe Biden in order to beat Donald Trump. And then couple that with the problem of electability, and they banked on that before with Hillary Clinton, doesn't always work. It didn't work in 2016 for Bernie Sanders. Do you think it's going to work now? I think we're having a real live generational conversation mm. uh, within the, the electoral base. What I mean by that is that you have a generation of young people that Bernie Sanders is really mm. understanding, whether you're talking about student loans or you're talking about a generation that grew up only knowing more. They're yeah. going to be eligible to vote. 
But the difference between Bernie Sanders then and the world today is that the president, the White House, has made us less safe. We do not have the strength of our allies. We are now going into a different century where folks do not feel that we can trust the American decision making. And the only person that has personal relationships with these foreign leaders is Joe Biden. So it is an asymmetrical conversation that he's trying to gin up again. But you do have a generation where of individuals that say all we've known is war and we do want to stop this. Yeah. There's a strength to the clarity of Bernie's message on these issues. That's he, true. Joe Biden has, has this long career, this great experience. He's been eerily wrong on every major foreign policy debate in the past 40 years. He voted against the 1991 authorization for the use of military force, then for the 2003 one, which in 2020 he's still trying to explain, claiming that he shouldn't have trusted President George W. Bush so much. I mean, this is a jumble. And so I think the more we're focusing on these issues, the more these issues are in the news, the better chance Bernie has because of the clarity, not the good sense, but the clarity of his message. Bernie Sanders speaking to his base, yeah. right? So he has been, as you said, anti-war. He's going to ask, and he will again tomorrow, I'm sure, why was this the, 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 the answer? Why was there not a diplomatic solution? Why was there not more uh, restraints that could be put on Iran? Uh, why is the Secretary of State, who is our, our, our nation's diplomat, out talking about about the attack, about the assassination. Why is our diplomat involved in talking about an assassination? That's what Bernie Sanders is going yeah. to say. Klobuchar, I'm not sure she, you know, she had a moment there. I'm not sure she really delivered it. I'm not sure uh, uh, Americans want to hear that our role is only ever to always keep peace because right. historically that's not true and it won't be true in the future.